so um, I am working on a project right now. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I'm a graduate student at Western University, and I'm working on establishing a near developmental rat model um, with a specific focus on an area in the brain called the subplate and its role in the gap system in the prefrontal cortex. Okay, so um, my model is trying to focus on specifically cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia. And so cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia um, are a predictor of functional outcomes. Schizophrenia traditionally has been viewed as one of the most functionally impaired uh, psychiatric diseases or disorders. And of the three different types of symptoms or clusters of symptoms, positive, negative, and cognitive, um, cognitive symptoms have recently been um, gaining a lot of traction and focus because they uh, really indicate, um, or they're great predictors of not only functional outcomes, but also functional impairment in everyday life. And cognitive symptoms do have a significant um, interaction within the prefrontal cortex. And GAB, the GABA system has been identified as a key player in cognitive symptoms, as it uh, may result in disruptive excitatory inhibitory balance. Um, which may underlie these cognitive symptoms that we see within schizophrenia. And so the overall aim of my project is to, again, establish a neurodevelopmental rat model that show molecular abnormalities that are relevant to schizophrenia uh, by lesioning this transient layer um, early during neurodevelopment called the subplate in the developing prefrontal cortex in rat. And so the subplate is a relatively novel field um, or area of research within neuro, neuroscience. Um, and subplate neurons are one of the earliest generated and the mature subset of neurons. And they actually are just below the cortical plate. If you see here on the left, this is a P2 rat brain. And so I've outlined the cortical plate here and the subplate as well as the white matter um, so the subplate is very transient. In rat, it only stays around um, the first one or two postnatal weeks, and they quickly begin undergoing uh, programmed apoptosis. And the role of the subplate um, during early development is to kind of serve as a waiting compartment. And so the thalamus during early development will project its um, thalamic cortical inputs towards the cortical plate and the subplate neurons will essentially kind of catch those inputs and relay them towards the cortical plate. And as I mentioned just a couple minutes ago, subplate neurons undergo programmed cell death towards the end of the first postnatal week, sometimes uh, beginning of second postnatal week, really depending on the birth date of those neurons, which results in the more monosynaptic thalamic input to the cortex um, that we know are present in adults. And so here on the bottom left, there's a schematic. Um, and layer four is just a, um, a layer of the cortical plate that um, one of the papers I really um, took inspiration from for my thesis was focusing on. And so that's why it just happens to be layer four. But essentially, during early development, the thalamus will relay its inputs to the subplate. And the subplate neurons catch that and further relay it to the cortical plate. And throughout development, our subplate neurons undergo apoptosis, and it's a more monosynaptic thalamic input from the thalamus to the cortex. And so in lesioning the subplate, um, the hypothesis is that thalamic cortical afferent pathfinding may be aberrant, uh, which may contribute to the development of abnormal cortical cellular distribution, uh, potentially that uh, we may see reflected in schizophrenia. And so these abnormal cellular distributions in schizophrenia include GABAergic neurons, and um, more specifically, a subset of those which are pervalbumin interneurons seem to be affected. And so literature consistently finds that there is a decrease in pervalbumin mRNA, which is layer specific, so layers three and four in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, as well as a decrease in protein levels. Um, in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex as well. Um, in addition to pervalbumin deficits, there also seems to be a consistent finding of aberrant GAD67 protein levels 
Um, specifically, again, in layers three to five, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. But also it's interesting to note that this decrease in GAD67 uh, protein levels are actually only found in a subset of pervalbumin uh, positive interneurons. And so GAD67 doesn't seem to be um, a universal deficit across all interneurons, but rather just a subset of pervalbumin positive interneurons for those schizophrenia. And so in 2006, uh, two researchers, uh, Dr. Kennels and Dr. Schatz, um, did a very elegant study in the visual cortex of cats. And um, my thesis uh, was actually very heavily inspired by um, this project. And so in, in their study, they lesioned the subplate um, in the visual cortex of cats, and they found that it resulted in an immature GABAergic system in adult cats. And a lot of the molecular abnormalities they found in these cats as an adult were very similar to molecular abnormalities that we see in postmortem schizophrenia brains. One of them was decreased KCC2 mRNA levels. KCC2 is a core co-transporter protein, which I will talk about in just a minute. And they found a very localized deficit in specifically layer four of the lesioned subplate brain as an adult. And they also found that perforated patch recordings revealed a depolarizing current only in layer four. Um, and so GABAergic neurons are uh, traditionally hyperpolarizing. However, they found that a lesion subplate um, in layer four, they found it to be depolarizing. And so um, the, these, co, uh, these chloride co-transporter proteins that I was just mentioning, one of them is KCC2. And KCC2 acts in uh, tandem with another co uh, chloride co-transporter protein called NKCC1. And so early in the immature brain, um, NKCC1 is expressed um, more in relative to KCC2. And so the ratio of these two proteins that are expressed eventually determine the intracellular chloride concentration which subsequently um, predict or um, affect the um, GABA-A receptor function, which then um, determine the gaba response. And so in a nutshell, um, as, as the brain develops, um, neurons naturally express an increasing um, KCC2 amount and decreasing NKCC1. And so the ratio switches, which allows for our GABAergic response to change from one that is excitatory or depolarizing to hyperpolarizing. And so essentially what the study found was that in adults, the GABAergic system was remaining um, an immature one. Previously, my lab have also um, done taken a look at these animals and uh, done several behavioral tasks. And we have seen traditionally that the NGF lesioned animals or the subplate lesioned animals performed uh, worse on several behavioral tasks that were related to uh, focus and traditionally related to schizophrenia behavioral models. And so um, just for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go straight into the methods. Um, my project, we injected P1 rats bilaterally into the developing prefrontal cortex with NGF or sterile saline, and they were sacrificed in multiple time points from early postnatal uh, weeks from P5 to adulthood. Uh, they were immersion fixed, um, and then they were coronal sections were cut and subsequently immunolabeled for KCC2, that chloride code transporter protein, pervalbumin, and GAD67. Um, and then images were analyzed with ImageJ software. And so I use NGF to lesion my subplate, um, which essentially during early postnatal weeks binds to P75 receptor, causing cell death specifically within the subplate layer. Um, so my, uh, my study has uh, found that this pervalbumin protein and GAD67 protein um, have a um, difference, or more specifically, sorry, the oops, the um, the pervalbumin um, uh, intensity 
Um, it seems to be lower in NGF animals as compared to saline animals, which is our control animal. And so this is only specifically in the lower uh, prelimbic cortex, which I have assigned as layers five and six. Um, we haven't seen any significant differences in the density of either pervalvament or GAS67 positive cells, um, nor have we seen any significant differences in GAS67 uh, in uh, fluorescence intensity levels. However, there seems to be a layer specific pervalvament intensity difference across our groups as we expected according to literature, seen in postmortem schizophrenia studies. There we go. I also got a chance to look at KCC2. And um, so KCC2 just has a kind of uh, fluorescent signal distribution pattern or expression pattern that is quite difficult to quantify in terms of how many cells or density of um, number of cells that are expressing KCC2. And so I just decided to stick with the intensity output. Um, and I found, uh, so the analysis shows that there is a significant difference um, in the intensity of KCC2 across our experimental and control groups, specifically in the upper prelimbic cortex. Um, to my knowledge, there are no studies right now uh, that look at KCC2 levels in the early postnatal weeks. Uh, most studies only look at KCC2 as an adult. And interestingly, we didn't find any differences as an adult in KCC2 intensity. Another protein that I am uh, slowly starting to analyze and take a look at is NGCC1, which again, as I mentioned earlier, goes kind of, uh, is kind of partnered with KCC2. And so I thought it might be just nice to show you the distribution patterns of NKCC1 in a control animal early during um, postnatal weeks. Um, so this is postnatal day two when NKCC1 is expected to be expressed at high amounts. And you can kind of just see the outline of the cell membrane uh, here within the cortical plate. And so to conclude, um, there are there is a decreasing trend in pervalvament protein expression in subplate lesioned rats in the prefrontal cortex, in line with um, several postmortem schizophrenia studies. Um, we are seeing higher KCC2 expression in early postnatal NGF rats compared to their saline counterparts. Um, this could be due to um, the subplate's role and KCC2's role in neuronal migration, um, and so this could be a compensatory mechanism and NKCC1 expression patterns are to be determined in subplate lesion trucks. Great, thank you. So we have a, an open question for you. Uh, what about if we just move on with our next speaker and you could uh, write an answer for, for sure. attendee? Okay, thank you. So Sutsi from Univ